Welcome to the snow show and welcome to the family friendly Sagaiki in Hakaba, Japan. Today we check out possibly the world's widest ski slope. We check out the terrain park, the trees and learn how to use our feet to control our speed. We'll discover how to choose the best snowboard and the importance of wearing quality gloves and mitts when we're in the snow. Plus, you and a friend could win the ultimate Huckabas snow getaway of your own. Hey guys, I'm Andrew McComb. And I'm Daniel Mee. Founder of Huckabee Snow Sports School, and welcome to the snow show at Sagaiki Resort. Sagaiki Resort is famous for its beginner and intermediate terrains. It's also got great trees and an incredible backcountry. With over 20 kilometres of well-groomed trails, including one which is five kilometres long, the resort caters to skiers and snowboarders of all abilities. Freestyle enthusiasts will find adrenaline and fun in the terrain park, and the more adventurous can head out to the world-famous backcountry for some Suga Pow. Okay, Andy, should we go and explore Sagaiki? Yeah, I've heard big things, mate. I'm looking forward to this one. Yeah, no, there's a whole ensemble of terrain out there. We've got the terrain park, we've got trees, we've got big, wide open groomers. Should we go and hit it? Let's do it. Here we are at the top of the prairie fields of Sagaiki, Andy. Another beautiful day in Huckabee, Dan. It certainly is. This run is uh, famous for uh, its width and the generosity it gives the beginners and the intermediates. What are we gonna do here, mate? Well, it's quite flat, Andy, so I think you really gotta let the skis run. Just point them down the hill and let them go and enjoy the scenery. I don't think I've seen a wider run in my life. Yeah, it's incredible, eh? Really instills the confidence. Let's do it. All right, let's go. Andy, that's the prairies of Sagaiki. Massive. Biggest, widest, friendliest uh, slope I reckon I've ever seen, especially for those lower intermediates. Yeah, man, it's an uh, amazing area. You've got a couple of lifts running up here. And uh, yeah, once you've got your wedge and your wedge turns down, then you can really uh, let it go down here. And it's so wide, it just instills a lot of confidence, doesn't it? Yeah, mate, confidence is probably the best word. Like it builds immense confidence straight away. The snow quality is fantastic, but the, the width, it's like, honestly, it's a massive playground for, for those lower intermediates. Yeah, man. Okay, shall we go and uh, check out one of the more advanced slopes on the Sagaiki? Absolutely. Let's go. This ski school lesson brought to you by Huckabee Snow Sports School. Now we're gonna look at our foot steering and how steering our feet is the key to controlling your speed successfully. We're gonna look at foot steering and how important foot steering is to control our speed because if we can't steer our feet, you can't change the orientation of your skis to the pull of gravity, you can't slow down. We're gonna do an exercise and uh, this exercise is something you can do anywhere and it's gonna really help you out to get the feeling of steering your feet in the same movements we do when we're skiing. Where does steering come from? Steering comes from inside your pelvis, your ball and socket joint of your femur. Okay, that's where we steer, our foot steering comes from. Doesn't come from the foot, 
comes from right inside here in your hip joint, okay? In this exercise, I'm gonna think of using my leg like the arm of a compass to get my foot to steer through a nice arc where the tip of my boot and the heel of my boot, the toe of my boot and the heel of my boot pass through the same line, just like we wanna do when we're skiing with a nice smooth turn shape. Basically, my ski is a big shoe. My boot is a tiny ski. So they're exactly the same movements. If you can do this exercise in your boots, you're gonna find it a lot easier in your skiing. We call this boot arcs. In boot arcs, what I wanna do is orientate myself facing down the hill. I'm gonna stand square and I'm gonna put my hands on top of my poles in like what we call a bullfighter stance. I can support my body weight here. I'm gonna put either one of my boots on its edge behind me like this. What I'm going to do here is then use my leg like the arm of a compass and drive the toe through the snow to create a nice arc in the snow. My rate of steering stays consistent and now I can do it with my opposite foot. I steer my toe around, feeling my leg pivoting in my pelvis, my upper body is staying down the hill, here you go, and now I've made a nice symmetrical circle. That's the first step to this. After you do this, you can practice steering the inside foot. That would be my outside foot of the turn. Now we're going to do the outside foot. I come across my skis or my boot. I feel the inside edge of this foot. And now I drive my inside foot around. So I've practiced steering to the outside and now to the inside. I'm going to do it here with my left foot, around here, come across my boot and steer the inside of my boot. Now we're left with these nice arcs. The inside edge circle is smaller because it's got a tighter radius than my outside. The key points here is you don't want your boot to go flat. It stays on its edge and you use muscular strength to bring your toe and your heel through the arc, then I come across, I feel that edge, and I drive the inside of my boot back around here. No point should your boot go flat. I go from outside edge to inside edge with an instant edge change. And you can, if you do it really good, you can start making these beautiful arcs outside, inside, outside inside you go back up you do it with your other foot and you should be able to link them up and this is an exercise that will benefit your skiing because it's practicing steering your feet in a small environment for more great ski and snowboard lessons visit the snowshow.tv forward slash ski school we're at the top of the Hananoki number three lift at Sagaiki. This is a great run for intermediates, and you've got a uh, fantastic terrain park down there too. What are we going to do, Dan? Well, I don't know. I think um, you can lead off and uh, check out these intermediates, and then maybe we'll split ways further down. All right, let's go. Do it. Okay, Andy, I'm going over to the park, mate. You go that way. All right, see you at the bottom? See you at the bottom.
Okay, Andy, that's a Hanukkah number three lift at Sagaiki. Quite a few options there. You got the terrain park where I went down. How was your side? Great, down that left side, beautiful wide open. And uh, obviously you got the right side, which is similar. Yeah, yep, yeah, it is. And that uh, park I went down had some fantastic features. I didn't actually realize it was so extensive. Yeah, one thing I noticed, Dan, I was getting a bit of speed up down there and without the goggles today, a bit of wind in the eyes, a bit different to goggles. Yeah, the wind tend to sneak around the glasses, eh? But uh, my advice to anyone is always to wear a helmet for safety. And with the helmet, the goggles usually go as a set. You look a bit dorky with a helmet and glasses on, to be honest. Are you saying I look like a dork? Well, when you've got your helmet and glasses, you are. <laughs> the latest in ski and snowboard equipment brought to you by Rhythm Rentals. For all your ski and snowboard equipment needs, visit the snowshow.tv forward slash ski equipment. Here we are at the top of Sagaiki at the Suga number two pier lift. Doesn't look very long, Dan. Yeah, well, it's not a very long run. It's uh, a good one for intermediates and that and in advanced, but um, the key to this lift, Andy, is it links you to all the back country and gives you access to the Sagaiki trees. Sounds exciting. We're going to do some trees today. Well, I'll go up and have a look and see what the conditions are like, eh? Yeah, you think I'm up to it? Well, we'll see, Andy. We'll right. see. Let's give it a nudge. Okay, Andy, I'm gonna go into the trees. Um, to go on the trees here, you need to be part of the Double Black Diamond Club, uh, the DBD Club. Now, I'm gonna put this on my arm. Now, this gets us access to the trees. You have to do a seminar at the start of the season. 
they give you this pass, a safety seminar, and uh, tells you all about the trees and the safety and that sort of thing. And um, yeah, I'm ready to go now. As you only have to do it one time a season, so maybe next season when you come back, you can get involved. All right, so I'll see at the bottom of the trees. Yeah, I'll go down the trees, you go down the easier run, and um, we'll reconvene, eh? Let's reconvene. This is one of the beauties of this, uh, this cheerlift here. Okay, see you, see you soon, guys. Wow, well done, mate. Yeah, that was an uh, interesting run in the spring conditions, but uh, still, this time of year, man, those trees are awesome. What a run, though, hey? You've got all those trees for the for the more advanced. You've got the, the intermediate slope there, but a steep at the top that flattens out a bit. Loved it, man. Loved yeah, it. yeah. Well, what you see there, man, that's only just touching the sides. Honestly, that uh, you can go all the way around this ridge and it's just longer and steeper and better, those trees. So yeah, that's a taste, and that's what makes this uh, Suga number two lift a real winner. All right, let's go and have a drink. You deserve one. Yep, thanks, mate. The latest in ski and snowboard clothing brought to you by Halley Hansen, alive since 1877. For all your ski and snowboard clothing needs, visit hallihansen.com.au. After an inspiring day at Sagaiki, we headed back to the main village of Hapo to stay at the world famous Marilyn Hotel, located at the base of Hapo One Resort. The hotel is one of Hakaba's only true ski in, ski out properties and is only a short walk to the main Hapo village, where you can find an abundance of restaurants, bars, shops, and onsens. 
The rooms at the Maryland are very warm and cosy and ideal for couples, groups and families alike, featuring traditionally carved Austrian style wooden furniture with comfortable pillow top beds. It's rustic, it's natural and it's your Austrian Alpine home in Japan. And it also features the Burns Keller restaurant and bar, owned by the world's best publican, Burns Keller himself where we enjoyed a few German beers and a cheese fondue as we sat fireside and watched the snow fall on the floodlit slopes and listened to the live music from local and international talent. But our night didn't end there. Just metres down the road, we caught up with a few friends at Refuel, an after-hours institution created by Tetsu Suda. Everything from the layout of the bar, the artsy decor adorning the walls, to the friendly culture of the staff creates an atmosphere that is warm, and inviting, a place where strangers become friends, and a true testament to Tetsu's creation that he literally built by hand. All in all, we had a great night out at some of the icons in this magical village they call Hakaba. Want to win the ultimate Hakaba Japan ski adventure for two, worth over $10,000? This epic prize includes an amazing $1,500 ski clothing pack from Halley Hansen. Five nights luxurious accommodation at the Hapo, five day skiing or snowboarding at your choice of 10 world-class ski resorts. Five days of ski or snowboard lessons with the legendary Huckaba Snow Sports School. All your ski and snowboard rentals from Rhythm Rentals and a pair of Oakley's revolutionary snow goggles for each of you. Plus transfers to and from Tokyo with Nagano Snow Shuttles. So what are you waiting for? Head to thesnowshow.tv and click on the Huckaba competition tile for your chance to win this adventure of a lifetime. Okay, Andy, that was Sagaiki. It's a bit of a mouthful, that uh, name to say, but uh, how'd you find the writing here? Oh, mate, I loved it. I guess the, the big thing for me, Dan, is the backdrop to me really sums it up. It's like epic, wide open, expansive land. Yeah. But you've got trees, you've got uh, backcountry, you've yeah. got beauty. And honestly, a lot of fun. Yeah, how'd you find those prairies down the bottom? They're just crazy wide, eh? Oh, as a as a beginner to a like learner slash uh, you know low intermediate, they are the ideal runs, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. And for the intermediates, you got those top to bottoms with a bit of undulating stuff. The terrain park, that's awesome as well. Absolutely. The the length of the runs here, like from top to bottom, is is massive. So you certainly, I mean, you could probably do 20 minute run here from top to bottom, I reckon, as a, as a low intermediate or intermediate. Yeah, for sure. And uh, let's not forget the DBD club and the uh, back country that gets accessed here, you know, the Double Black Diamond Club. You know, you go on the trees here and on a powder day, man, they, they are killer. Yeah. You know, um, it's, it really is world class uh, back country and inbounds with this DBD club as well. Well, I'm looking forward to joining that club next year. I'm certainly going to bring the family back. It's a perfect family resort. Here is to Sagaiki. Sagaiki. Come by. Come by, man. If you feel inspired to ski or snowboard Huckaba Japan, check out our amazing offers at thesnowshow.tv forward slash Huckaba. Well, there it is, guys. I'm Andrew McComb. And I'm Daniel Mee. And thanks for watching the Snow Show at Sagaiki Resort. For more videos, special offers and information, go to thesnowshow.tv or follow us on YouTube at The Snow Show. And if you want to up your snow game, come and see us at Huckaba Snow Sports School. Well, Andy, that was another great day for the race, wasn't it? The race? The human race. <laughs> <laughs>